commence primary ignition. Welcome to Unlimited Power. My name is D-Rod, and here's my guide for upgrading your Mandalorian starter deck from Star Wars Unlimited's newest set, Shadows of the Galaxy. Now, if this is one of your first time watching one of my upgrade videos, I always start off by saying the goal here is to focus on cards that can really strengthen what the original starter deck is trying to do. We're going to offer a budget option and a master's option. The budget will focus on easily accessible commons and uncommons found within the current sets and their starter decks. The master option is going to focus on rares and legendaries found within those sets. There's definitely going to be a lot of ways you can upgrade someone like the Mandalorian, um, and, but this is going to be the ones that I found are the most efficient to what the starter deck is trying to do while still being fun and competitive. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the Mandalorian does as a leader and a leader unit. So as a leader, Mandalorian has the ability that says, when you play an upgrade, you may exhaust him. If you do, exhaust an enemy unit with four or less remaining HP. So this is a little bit slow, but not as conditional as we've seen in other starter deck leaders. Mandalorian wants you to play upgrades so you can exhaust your opponent's units, which means most of your first actions are going to be deciding who do you want to upgrade, um, what upgrade do you want to play, and who are you exhausting. As your opponent gets more units in play, this is going to be a harder decision each time. Something's going to hit you, but something won't, and that's where you have to make those decisions. This means Mando's going to play a little bit slow, and he definitely plays a little bit more of an aggressive mid-range style. So it's better to kind of find cards that are going to work really well with him to make this, you know, his abilities work. As an epic action, you can deploy Mandalorian when you control six or more resources. This means you can do this as early as phase five. When he's deployed, he's a four seven unit. And when you play an upgrade, you can may exhaust a unit that with six or less remaining HP. So the difference here is that the HP requirement gets higher, so you can take care of a couple of other units, um, not all of them, but most of them, and you can do this multiple times a phase rather than once because you don't have to exhaust the Mandalorian to do it as you did when he was a leader. Now, what is the starter already set up to do? Definitely set up to control those first few phases. Using Mandalorian's ability means you're probably going to avoid two to three attacks before Mandalorian even comes out. And that can really make a difference in your play. The next is it builds up ground units with upgrades and upgrade tokens. It really wants to take these smaller units and makes them stronger. And that can be important when you're playing upgrades. You don't really want to only play upgrades every turn. You want to play upgrades and units. So you got to play small ones to keep your tempo going. By tempo, we talk about th putting cards out there and continually building upon that every turn. That doesn't necessarily mean you're making one card stronger every turn. It just means you're building up your board state in a very positive, um, constructive way. And we'll see that a little bit more in some of the examples I'll show you once we get to the decks. Now, there's always decks that are going to be staples to what the um, units and leaders do. Here are going to be some of the staples that I think go really well, and you'll see them in the budget in the master deck, but cards that really only work are, well, cards that work best, I would say, with the Mandalorian. One of them is going to be Grief Karga. Uh, played by the legendary Carl Weathers, Grief Karga is great, and he fits the theme of the Mandalorian TV show here. He's a two-cost, two-two unit that, when played, searches the top five cards of your deck for an upgrade you reveal it and you draw it. He's great at pulling those low cost upgrades or those um, necessary upgrades into your hand out of your deck faster, keeping your hand refilled. But if you're playing a card out of your hand and refilling it, that's good value, especially so early with this with a unit that's just a fair trade. Next is the Mandalorian's Rifle. A card that really only works um, best with the Mandalorian, it gives any unit a plus three plus zero, and when played on the Mandalorian, you can capture an exhausted unit. Because Mando allows you to exhaust units, this gives you a better pick of what you want to take. Next is Grogu, a two cost force user with zero power and five health. Now, Grogu is probably going to be the one unit people want to take out of this starter deck, but I'm going to advise you not to. Let's build around this. There's a lot you can do with Grogu, and at a two cost, you're not losing much. At most, he's always going to be able to exhaust the enemy unit you don't want to swing on you. He has no limitation on that. So it can be a Devastator, it can be a Crate Dragon, it can be a Darth Vader. 
Grogu can make sure you take no swing um, that from that unit. Next, another Mandalorian TV show character, Kiel. Kiel, I think, is going to be the heart of what this deck can do. You only get one of in the starter deck, but I'm definitely going to recommend adding two of in both decks because he's a two cost unit with a two three with the restore ability. Now, stat wise, obviously, he's a little better than Grogu. He's better than Grief Karga, but playing Kiel on turn one is going to set you up for good card advantage. Card advantage is king in so many card games. And because he has the ability of on attack, you discard a card from your deck. If it shares an aspect with your base, return it to your hand. So as long as it's matching your, um, your base, you're just filling your hand with more cards. This is why there's going to be a lot of overhaul in both these decks. They only gave you one kill in the starter and gave you a lot of yellow. So what happens when we switch that out for more blue? We're going to see more cards coming into your hand giving you more options, keeping you ahead of your opponent. Last is another Mandalorian staple, Razor Crest. A four cost, three, four space unit with restore two. Stat wise, it's okay. But the win plate ability, I think, is what makes it a little bit more key here. It's nice if you can get res the restore mechanic to trigger twice in a game. But if you can time the win plate ability to pull out an upgrade that you know can really turn the game, that's really what you want it for. Using those upgrades to exhaust units or strengthen your own, again, is key to, to a lot of the strategy behind the Mandalorian. And we can, we're going to see that right now as we take a look at the budget deck. The goal here is to limit the amount of damage received, whether by healing our base, protecting it with Sentinel units, or exhausting our opponent's units. We want quick access to upgrades with cards like Keel and Grief Karga, and we want to keep those smaller units in play longer than expected. So the first card we're going to add is Cargo Juggernaut. You already have one, let's up it to two. Cargo Juggernaut's going to be a six cost unit, but that's a four six that shields itself, and as long as you have a blue unit in play, heals your base. There's not as much value if you're not healing your base, so it's important to set yourself up for this if you have it in hand and you've taken some damage. Next, Clan Ren Rescuer. Let's just go ahead and give you um, a play set of this. Clan Rescuer, when played, will give an experience token to a unit. Not my favorite two-cost unit in the deck, but it can really strengthen cards like Keel and Grogu, giving them more health and keeping them in play longer. I don't recommend putting the upgrade counter on Clan Ren Rescuer unless he's your only unit in play. We've already talked about the strength of Kiel, and but we definitely want you to have a play set in the deck. Chain Code Collector is another card that needs to be a playset because it is a four cost, four two unit with ambush. That too may discourage you, but as long as the defender has a bounty, you can attack and give that defender negative four, negative zero for the attack and essentially take zero damage back to the collector. Chain Code Collector can easily be a two for one card. He can be even more depending on the amount of upgrades that you're playing every phase. Next is Ezra Bridger. A strong three cost force unit that gets a three four on attack. Uh, sorry, when they complete an attack, look at the top card of your deck and you may play it, discard it or leave it. Ezra is going to be allow you to see cards to trigger a kill's ability more efficiently. Ezra is also going to allow you to play some cards that are zero cost or certain upgrades quicker. He essentially is just giving you more access to cards and that's vital. Next is adding two more public enemy, an upgrade bounty that when resolved can give a shield to a unit of your choice. This card is a great card to return consistently with razors, uh, with the razor crest. Um, and because you want to try to get as many of these shield mechanics off, protecting cards like Ezra, Kuehl, um, or even some of the other ones we'll see. Luke's lightsaber is just a solid two cost upgrade. Gives you plus three, plus one, and if you play it on Luke, sure, you can heal, but <clears throat> at this point, it's just a solid one to pull with Grief Karga. Throw it on Kuehl, throw it on um, Grogu, have some fun with some Force users. Speaking of Force users, you need a play set of Kanan. Kanan's probably going to be your, your star of your show here in the budget uh, series. With a, As an uncommon, he's a four cost, four, five. Stat-wise, that is a fair um, value. On attack, you may discard one card from the defending player's deck for, for each friendly specter unit. 
that includes him. Ezra makes it two. Um, for each aspect discarded this way, or each different one, you'll at least heal a damage from your base. So Kanan's going to make sure you are milling your opponent, removing cards from their deck, and he's going to make sure you're healing while also damaging something. That's a lot of value in keeping Kanan in play. Restored ARCs, you're going to want a play set of this space unit because you're going to have the ability to just play this unit um, as early as turn one, and then you'll have the restore mechanic on board. Restored ARC will pull a lot of hate from your opponent, hopefully earlier rather than later. Um, that way you can have a little bit more room with cards like Ezra and Kanan. Top target is a one cost upgrade that gives your opponent a bounty. Now, if when they're defeated, you can heal four damage from a base or a unit. And I like having those options. But with the amount of unique characters out there, you could actually put this on one of them and heal six instead. And there's so much value in healing six. It can really um, deter your opponent from focusing on bases, or it can immediately heal something, someone as large as the Mandalorian himself. Next is going to be the forces with me. You're going to want three of this four cost event because you have cards like Grogu, Ezra, and Kanan. By giving two experience tokens to a unit, you're already strengthening what they're doing and giving them a permanent buff. But if they're a force unit, they get a shield. Lastly, they get to attack immediately. So I think force users are the better one here. Your opponent certainly won't expect a two... Um, what? A two seven Grogu swinging at you with a shield. Um... Again, really strengthens what you're doing, pulls a little hate from cards like Kuehl, but can keep cards like Kanan in play a lot longer. And lastly, it's going to be three of takedowns. You're really playing a strong mid-range strategy. So takedown is a solid event because when you hit that four resources, you really want to deal with whatever is currently in your way. Keeping your low-cost units alive is important, and takedown can take care of some of those early leaders as well as some of those early threats. Now, the strategy here, um, even though this says Gideon, it's not, um, is to play one upgrade of phase to control the game, keep your hand filled with grief, Ezra, and Kuehl, and surprise opponents with big swings from small units, protect and equip units like Kuehl with up upgrades and exhaust abilities, and stop playing resources after six. Again, a lot of your small units are going to be your bread and butter here try to really hard to keep that one upgrade a phase because you don't want to overextend upgrades have that one exhaust ability until um Ma I'm sorry until mandalorian is out so you really want to be wise with that and use them every turn one cost upgrades are they going to be the ones you want to use wisely zero cost hold on to them um so that way you can play cards at your full resource and surprise your opponent with a zero cost upgrade Here's going to be your full list for the Mandalorian. There's going to be a link down in the description below to this list so you can see it or try it out uh, yourself. Here you can see we've kept in a lot of the similar cards from the starter deck like Grief, Grogu, those staples. Um, Village Protectors is one that stayed in the deck, which I think is solid. And we left the two wanted in there, another strong upgrade. Um, have a lot of fun with this budget deck, but let's go ahead and take a look now at the Master deck. Let's throw in some rares and legendaries and improve what we've already talked about from the budget series. Now, the goal here is still the same. Overwhelm our opponents with low-cost units. Keep the ground arena clear using abilities and events. Build up strong threats among low-cost units and stabilize with Sentinel units. Now, you probably have seen the budget deck or you've seen the starter deck. Really, the Sentinels they give you are cards like Village Protectors. There's a lot of strong... Uh, low-cost Sentinel units that can probably sit in a sideboard, but I'm going to think let's go bigger. Let's try to have that strong mid-range swing. So first card we're adding in is two rares of Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's a Sentinel six-cost unit that's a four-six, and when defeated, give two experience tokens to another friendly unit. Hard tokens like this, permanent buff counters, are going to be cards that can really strengthen what you're doing. Grogu gets better. Kuehl gets better. If you play this on someone like Grogu, Ezra, or Kanan, because they're a force unit, you can draw a card, and we've already talked about the value of drawing cards in this game. Luke Skywalker is going to be another great addition here. Throw in two legendaries of Luke at the seven cost. He's going to be your highest cost unit you're playing, but look at the value here. A 6-7. 
when played, give an enemy unit negative three, negative three, or give a negative six, negative six for the phase if one of your friendly units were defeated. You also have a restore three mechanic. So every time they attack, you're going to be healing your base. When you add cards like restored ARC and Kuehl, that's a lot of restoration there. Even Razor Crest gives you two. Another strong Sentinel unit is the Mandalorian. We got to add this guy in here. We've talked about two cost units. Mandalorian not only brings you Sentinel at a six cost and a five, six, but he heals all damage from a unit that costs two or less and gives two shield tokens to it. So imagine if you played the tempo with Grogu turn one, protect him with bounties so your opponents aren't swinging into him, throw in a, a lightsaber and kind of keep him alive, right? It's, it's Grogu, lightsaber, forces with me. You now have this really strong two cost unit. Your opponent wants to take it out. And all of a sudden the Mandalorian comes in here, heals him and gives him two more shields, making it difficult for your opponent. When it happens, it's beautiful. Does it always happen? No, but it's still fun. Next is going to be adding two more restored ARCs. We've already talked about this one. Two more Kules, two chain code collectors, two Ezra Bridgers, two public enemies, two Luke's lightsabers, three Kanan Jairus's, three top targets, three takedowns, and three forces with me's. Nothing... Um, much has really changed here. We're taking out a couple other cards from the original set of the budget deck, and then we're adding in those rares and legendaries. I really think this deck is super fun. I've had a lot of fun playing some, some top tier decks with it, and it's definitely a surprise for most of my opponents. The strategy here is just to play one upgrade a phase to control the game. Again, you really just wanna make sure you're not overextending with those bounties. Keep your hand filled with cards like Grief, Ezra and Kuehl. Use their abilities to give you more options. Surprise your opponents with big swings from small units using upgrades. Protect and equip units like Kuehl with those upgrades and exhaust abilities. And then you can stop playing resources after seven. Again, there's gonna be a link down in the description below to this deck, and you can see it here in the physical or in the visual form that there's still a lot of those original staples and some cards from the original starter. Kuehl, Village Protectors, Grief, Grogu, Razor Crest, all these cards, that way you only have to make a few more additions without completely changing how the deck operates. Thanks so much for watching my deck upgrade for The Mandalorian. If this is content you like and want to see more of, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, things that let me know I should continue doing things like this, especially when we have a couple of more months until Twilight of the Republic. We can do some other budget, budget videos out there for people looking at it, um, or even master videos of some alternate decks that aren't just typical metal ones. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying a lot of Star Wars Unlimited as much as I am and getting ready for planetary qualifiers here in the next couple months. And if so, I wish you luck. And to all of you, may the force be with you.